WP Bakery is one of the most, if not the most, popular page builders in WordPress. If you're looking at themes on ThemeForest, there's a solid chance that the theme will be made using WP Bakery. Often when I finish making a website for a client, I'll link a page builder video that can help them understand how to edit their website. However, when I do a quick search for WP Bakery videos, I find they are way longer than they need to be. So I'll be making my own today. Let's start with the basics. WP Bakery is a one-time fee of $56 US, and you can buy it off of WPBakery.com. It's not found in the WordPress plugin store because they want you to have it behind a paywall. After installing and activating the plugin, you can immediately start building pages with it. There's two editing modes with WP Bakery, the Live Builder and the Block Editor, which they call the Front End and the Back End Editor, respectively. It's mostly up to preference which one you want to use. I find the front end editor a little bit glitchy and have a much easier time making pages in the back end editor. Despite the fact that with the back end editor, whenever you make a change, you have to save the page and update the live page in a new tab just to see your changes. You can edit a page with WP Bakery by editing a page as you would regularly, but then finding and clicking the button that brings you to the, either the front end editor or the back end editor. This is what the front end builder looks like. You can add in blocks and shit. All right, I've had enough of that. Let's go back to the back end editor. Back in the back end editor, at the bottom, you can see you can add rows and elements. You'll probably be using the rows element the most. Once you add in a row, you can hover over this area and choose how many columns to have for that row. Here I'll select three columns. If you click on the custom button, you can manually type in a custom column set. All your column widths should add up to 12. A two column layout is six and six. A three column layout is four, four and four, and so on. After your row is set up, you can add in elements. With default WP Bakery, you'll probably have all the elements you would ever need. However, if you're using a WordPress theme, probably from ThemeForest, then you'll find some extra elements in there that you don't see on my screen. Usually WordPress themes will add in custom accordions, buttons, headers, and spacers. But let's start with the most common default elements, which are text, image, buttons, and accordions. Text is really basic. Once you add in a text block, it will by default have some lorem ipsum text inside there. Delete that shit. From here, you can copy and paste right from Google Docs or a similar program to add content to your website. A tip for you is that when you copy and paste text from somewhere and paste it in, you'll most likely have some formatting issues going on. Google Docs will do this very aggressively by putting inline font weight styling to your text. If you want to avoid the formatting and extra markup in your text when you paste, use Control Shift V instead of just the regular Control V to paste. This will save you many headaches. In the text element, you can add images, Add in bullet lists, bold, align, and link shit. Once you have done your changes, hit save in the pop-up, and then save page, and then you can go to the actual page and refresh it to see your changes. You can experiment by adding in different heading sizes and paragraph text. The next is the image element. First, add it in, and then select your image from your media. Type in the size and choose the alignment. After saving the changes, this is what it looks like. You might ask yourself, why would you use this image element if you can add in media in the text element? Well, the answer is with this size option. You can add in the usual, like the thumbnail, medium, large, and full sizes, but you can also do custom sizes. With typing in a custom size, you can make each image fit perfectly for your design, which is super helpful if you're a designer who likes to have everything lined up. It also helps with speed optimization because you're making an image size that's not too big for the container it's in. Moving on, the button element is also simple. You can change the text, link, and style. WP Bakery has their own default styles for buttons, which look pretty ugly, so I'd recommend adding a class to your button and overriding the style from there. And for the last element I'll cover today is the accordion. Once you add it in, you can see you can actually put elements inside each accordion section. Most likely, if you're making an FAQ section, you'll be using text elements. It's really not that common to be using anything but a text element in these accordions, but you could get fancy with it if you wanted to. To add a new accordion section, click the plus icon at the top and it will add it in. Now, let's actually look at a design and see if we can remake it with WP Bakery. 
I will introduce a lot more design options to not only get it laid out the way we want, but also designed as well. This should basically get you to the level to create pages on your own. Here's the design I'm going to remake. It's the official WP Bakery website. I wanted to pick something a little more fun like Pornhub or something, but I think this site demonstrates a lot more different layouts and is a better example for learning purposes. So WP Bakery it is. Let's start with the hero section. Right away, you can see it's not a full width container. It's a small container. WP Bakery actually has a default column layout just for this. I'll add in the row element and change it to that layout. You can see this layout uses three columns, but the one in the middle is the biggest. This is the one we want. In the center column, I'll add text, a button, and a video element. When I click the pencil icon for the row and go to the design tab, I can add in a background image. And here you can see I just actually stole there straight from their site. All right, so I'm going to save it and refresh and we can see how far we've gotten. And the first thing you'll notice is one of WP Bakery's biggest flaws, which is that it requires some CSS to get the exact design you're looking for, which is why our text is black. We have no easy option to do this in WP Bakery, so we'll have to do it with a little custom coding. To make it so I can use white text wherever I want, I'm going to add in some CSS to my additional CSS area in WordPress so I can add and use the class on text elements. In this code, it just makes all paragraphs and headings white within the class. So if I add this class to the text element, all the text inside of it will appear white. The last thing I'm going to do is to add some padding above and below the section to space it out more. The other thing you may have noticed is that the background image doesn't span the entire width of the row. This is because in the row settings, you have to set the row stretch to be stretch row, and then this will span the entire background image. This also applies for background colors as well, but if you're using a background image, you'll probably want to click this drop down where it says theme defaults and set that to cover. This will make the image look a whole lot better on wider screens. And now you can see the design looks less cramped and can breathe now and our text is now white. And for the logos, I'm just gonna add in a new row element and make sure it has the six column layout. Add an image in each of these columns and you're good to go. One thing you might notice is that the row is slightly gray. If you edit the row and go to the design options tab, you can add in a background color. I'll also add in some padding at the same time and this should be done. Because we're using a background color, don't forget to stretch the row. Here's what it looks like. The rest of the sections follow the same principles. A row that has two columns, on the left side text with a button, and on the right just an image. And I'll finish it off by adding some padding. And now, if I wanted to just duplicate the row, I can just click this button. And if you noticed, every other row has that same light gray background, so I'll add that again here. Because we're using a background color, don't forget to stretch the row. And because the layout does this alternating thing, I can just drag and swap these columns. I'll duplicate this a bunch more times to continue the layout. And now this is what it looks like with the rows added. You can see it doesn't look right because the text doesn't align vertically with the two columns. It would look a whole lot better if the text was vertically centered. You can actually do this in Bakery. If you edit the row and check the equal height box, and then scroll down to content position. You can set it to middle, and then once you save the changes, the content will vertically center itself, and it'll look a whole lot better. For this next section, I'll add in another row, three columns, and some padding. And in each column, I'll add in some text with the lists. You can see here, I've used an inner row, which is just a row, but inside another row, just so I could put the text element above the three columns. And for the final section, I'll add in a row, with text at the top and an inner row. And then you can choose the small container layout we used before and then add in an image inside. At this point, the layout is mostly done. I did just do some changes off screen. I updated the images and center aligned them. I spaced out a couple rows. I added some margins under the headings and finally I styled the buttons a little better. However, there is a problem. It's mobile responsiveness. 
So with WP Bakery, it takes care of some responsive discs for you, but most of the time there will always be something that you will have to do to make it look perfect. For the example of the alternating text in the image layout, on desktop it looks fine, but on mobile it looks awful and unintuitive. In this case, it should be an image at the top with the content underneath for all of them. To fix this, you'll have to add in some more code in your additional CSS. This code will enable you to specifically swap columns on mobile. I'll have a link in the description so you can copy and paste the code. Then with the code, you can put it on the class of the row, in this case, every other row, and on mobile, it should look perfect. You can see here, when I refresh, everything is lined up and in the order it should be. For mobile responsiveness, there are also some column width options. On the column, you can edit the width of the column depending on what size of the screen it is. And you can even hide that column on a specific size if you wanted to. If you want to have your design look good on tablet sizes, you'll probably have to tweak these for each of your columns. But for the most part, leaving them as is will be okay for mobile, just not so much tablet. A case where it wouldn't be good is these logos. On mobile, it would be much better if there were two columns instead of just the one. So if I change the option here to be six columns, or half the size on mobile, and I do this for all of them, when I hit save and refresh, it looks a whole lot better. Bakery also sucks when it comes to using custom margins and paddings on desktop versus mobile. Basically, if you want your padding to be different on certain sizes, you have to create more CSS so you can use classes to help you with this. Definitely the worst part about WP Bakery is the mobile responsiveness. Some themes do add in the functionality to have specific padding and margin on certain sizes, but by default WP Bakery doesn't have this, so it kind of sucks. And that's mostly it for the tutorial. Now I'm just going to finish with two quick tricks to help you use Bakery a lot easier. Number one is that if you want to copy an entire page layout to use for another page, at the top, you can click the Templates button, and then name the template whatever you want and click Save Template. Then, if you go to another page, you can just click the plus icon and it'll add it to the bottom of your current page. And lastly, number two is that you can do this with rows as well. If you edit a row, you can click the gear icon above, name it, and save it. Then basically, you can copy and paste this row to any page you want. Now, I find this actually quite a few times where this button doesn't allow you to actually save it. Usually this is with older websites. But if this ever happens to you, just click F12 and then use the select tool and then click on the button. On the button's HTML, you should see the attribute disabled. Just delete that and you should be able to save it. I'm not sure why it does this, but it's a really annoying bug and it's the only way I know how to fix it. Overall, Bakery isn't perfect, but it's pretty damn intuitive and customizable. I like it a lot. It's definitely not my favorite builder, but it gets the job done. If you want to become a better web designer or WordPress developer, check out my channel for more videos.